So Genesis 39, it picks up where we left off with Joseph. And if you remember, Joseph was uh, thrown into slavery by his brothers. They basically, you know, sold him into slavery. And it's just so remarkable, his story. Um, go back and read Genesis 37 if you don't know what I'm talking about. Also read Genesis 38 just to be <laughs> up to speed. But so it picks up, the story actually picks off chronologically after Genesis 37. Um, so verse one, Joseph was brought, bought from the Ishmaelites by Potiphar, which was a captain of Joseph's guard. Verse two, so powerful. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered even in the middle of his worst nightmare. So you would think, you know, Joseph was probably feeling so abandoned and lost, hurt, sad. And in the middle of all this, God still gave him favor, um, with Potiphar and so much so that Potiphar pretty much gave him control of everything he had. Um, and so God is with you. Even if you feel like you're at the lowest of lows, God is with you and he will give you favor. Th verses three through six, God's favor shone through in Joseph's life. And because of this, Joseph found favor with Potiphar and was put in charge of his household and entrusted everything to Joseph. And I wrote, how incredible is our God? So Potiphar was blessed because of Joseph. It said, the word says that Potiphar's household, everything that Joseph touched, you know, everything that he did for Potiphar was blessed because of Joseph's proximity to God. He was also able to, um, God blessed Potiphar and everything that he did because God blessed Joseph. And I wrote, we can also use our lives as a blessing for others. Do you ever, um, have times where, you know, you prayed for someone or you bless someone in a way, um, that helps them so much, you know, that's God using us to bless someone else. Um, do you know anyone like that? Do you know anyone who lives a life according to God? And do you know anyone who just continues to bless? Maybe you have someone in your life like, like that, you know, maybe they speak into your life or they help you in some way. And it's just, you know, because they are so close to God, it's a blessing to you. I kind of think about that's how it was with Joseph and Potiphar. So because not, maybe Potiphar didn't have a relationship with God, but because Joseph did and because, um, God blessed Joseph so abundantly and favored him, Potiphar's household was also blessed through Joseph. So we can be a blessing like that to other people who don't know him and help bring others to Christ. Joseph cared for both Potiphar's house and fields. That just goes to show me that, you know, Potiphar trusted him 100%, even to the point where it said that um, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. So Potiphar was like, you know what, Joseph, you handle all of this. And remember, Joseph bought Potiphar, uh, I'm sorry, Potiphar bought Joseph as a slave in his household. And then he ended up entrusting him with everything. You know, we can't deny God's presence in Joseph's life. Um, and if you ever have something remarkable happen to you, don't just chalk it up to circumstances or, you know, that just happened out of coincidence. It's God. And then I kind of reflected on that. And I said, Potiphar had that much trust in a man, which was Joseph. And I need to trust God in that way. You know, I need to just give it to God. You know, you know what, God, you got this. I'm entrusting you with everything. And I just need to, you know, worry about what I'm making myself for lunch, you know? Um, and of course, I don't mean um, literally, but I just mean uh, figuratively speaking, we have to trust God with everything. So trot Potiphar truly trusted Joseph with everything everything. And he was a captain of the guard, um, Pharaoh's guard. So he had a lot, I imagine he had a lot and he entrusted Joseph. So I just kind of reflect on my own life and my own relationship with God that I need to trust God more. And I need to trust God in the same way that Potiphar had trust in another man, which was Joseph. Of course, Joseph had God working within him, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to draw, um, a picture here. Verses seven through 10, Satan will try to tempt us I should have put two sin against God. So you see, everything is going well for Joseph. God is giving him favor, but then Satan tries to tempt. So verses 11 through 15 talks about Potiphar's wife, who it said that uh, Joseph was an attractive man and he was strong. She wanted to sleep with Joseph. And the word said that she approached him several times. And Joseph said, you know, Potiphar has given me control of all of this 
um, you know, of all his property, of everything he has. And the one thing he wants me to stay away from is his wife. You know, why would I betray his trust? Um, and she didn't like that answer too much because one day he came in and it said that he was just going about his normal work. Pot, she came in and she grabbed him by his cloak. And that first, at first it made me think of the cloak that his father gave him, but it wasn't the cloak that his father gave him because remember his brothers took that, put goat, uh, killed a goat, put blood on it from the goat and brought it to their dad and said, is this Joseph's, you know, cloak that you gave him? So it's, this, is, this is not the same cloak. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, but she demanded that he sleep with her. She must have been just full with lust. Um, she sounded very determined. She did not want to take no for an answer. And because he kept insisting and doing the right thing, you know, he was being um, a man of God. He was saying, you know, no, I'm not going to sleep with you. And I wrote, this reminds me of the Garden of Eden. He said, you know, Potiphar has entrusted me with all of this. And he asked me to stay away from one thing. And that reminded me of the Garden of Eden because God has entrusted had entrusted them with all of those things, you know, with everything in the garden. He said, just, you know, avoid the tree um, of knowledge. And um, even though Adam and Eve, they had everything, you know, at their hand, basically, they still ended up in sin. Satan came along, attended to them, and they fell into sin. Um, and that kind of reminded me of, you know, the same situation, kind of. So, Joseph was in the same position. He was in control of everything that Potiphar owned and he just had to stay away from his wife and he did so. But even though he did the right thing, she lied and she said, you know, nobody's in the house at the time. But then um, she told the servants, he tried to sleep with me and then I screamed, look, I have his cloak right here. So she wanted to make it seem like he was trying to push himself on her and force her into doing something that she didn't want to do. And she was just completely lying about it. She didn't care that she was sabotaging Joseph's life. She didn't care. She only cared about her own um, personal desires and her own ego, I guess, at this point, because he kept telling her no. And verse 16, it said that she kept the cloak until Potiphar came home. So she was determined. She wanted to get him out of there. She was probably thinking either I can have you or, you know, you got to get out of here. Um, and so that was super deceptive. She lied and she told the same story in Potiphar. And that is noted in verses 17 and 18. Um, verses 19 and 20, Potiphar threw Joseph into prison. And so if I was Joseph, I would probably think, you know, first, you know, and you know what? Now that I think about it, Joseph had favor with his dad, right? And he was put over his brothers in a way. And uh, part of it, you know, Joseph, did he antagonize his brothers a little bit by telling them his dreams and trying to make them a little bit jealous? Perhaps. However, that doesn't mean he deserves to be, you know, killed by his brothers or thrown into slavery um, by his brothers. So yeah, so Joseph had um, favor with his brothers, uh, over his brothers with his dad. Again, he was in a, in a very sticky situation, but God gave him favor again over many and he threw Joseph into prison. But God always has a plan. And even though Joseph is probably feeling so down again, I could imagine, you know, first my brothers try to kill me, sell me into slavery. And then, you know, now this, now I'm going to go to prison for something I didn't even do, you know. I just kind of feel bad for Joseph verses 21 through 23, but God always has a plan. God was with Joseph and he gave him favor. And again, he gives him favor. Now he's ahead of all of those in prison because he had favor with the prison warden. And again, that just goes to show if God has told you that something will happen in your life, it's going to happen. He will give you favor. He will give you favor no matter what the circumstances are. God can do anything. He is always with you. Um, and I think it's just so cool how you can keep seeing that in Joseph's life. He had favor over his brothers. He had favor with Potiphar's, um, everything Potiphar owned. I think it's just so incredible that we serve a God who, even though our circumstances may be not the greatest, he always has a plan and ultimately it's for his glory. And I think it, it's wonderful. So if you're struggling with something out there today, you know, hold on to the hope that God has a plan for you and he loves you. He has a very specific and purposeful plan for your life. I just want to thank you so much for watching. If you've been following along since the very first week, since Genesis 1, leave a comment. I would love to know. I'm so curious to know if there are, if there's anyone who actually does, you know, follow with me every week. I post a new Bible study every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 o'clock a.m. Eastern. Every Friday is this series to study the whole Bible with me. 
I can't wait to study the Bible with you again, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.